These are live images, folks, at the doors of the Supreme Court, where you can see protesters have gathered. They are demanding that their voices be heard as they anticipate who will, what, who, the person who will be a new Supreme Court justice, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, be sworn in here any moment. In a bigger picture, you can see approximately how many people who have gathered there. It looks like there are dozens, and they are chanting. Kavanaugh has got to go, is what I'm hearing them say. You see, there is high security there. As we look at these pictures, I, I want to bring in with me here Ariane DeVogue and Julie Pace. Ariane, when you look at these pictures, wow. having covered the Supreme Court for so long, have you ever seen anything like this? Well, I'll tell you this, you're usually not allowed on those stairs. You're not allowed up there. We did see the night he was nominated, there was a peaceful uh, protest where people were allowed to stand and uh, sit on those stairs. But we haven't seen anything like this. And why it's particularly interesting is we believe that he's going to be sworn in behind closed doors with uh, Chief Justice John Roberts giving him one oath. Uh, Justice Kennedy uh, delivering the other vote, which of course is so poignant because not only is he taking Justice Kennedy's seat, uh, but uh, it's uh, his former boss. He yeah. clerked for the, him there. But this is very unusual. We don't see this kind of protests uh, the high court. We do know that dozens of protesters have been arrested at the Capitol today. Are you surprised that the security is just letting this take place now? Well, I guess they're trying to manage it uh, as best they can, uh, but uh, this is unusual for the Supreme Court, and it just highlights what we've been talking about today, and that's the fact that the Supreme Court, the justices, don't like to be looked at as a political branch, mm -hmm. and that's why several of them must have just be so... Um, worried about how these last set of confirmation hearings turned so political. Mm -hmm. And earlier tonight, when you heard uh, uh, Chuck Schumer saying repeatedly, vote, 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 if you want to change it, that is not what the justices like. They do not like this process to be infused with politics because then people misunderstand what the court does. Julie, is this the quote unquote mob that Mitch McConnell referenced in his remarks? I think you would say yes. I think that when uh the parties look at this kind of scene, they see two different very different things. Democrats see uh, voters who are motivated to show up in November, who view this uh, confirmation hearing as not just a fight for a, the su a Supreme Court seat, but really something much bigger, uh, something that has uh, tapped into this cultural movement, with the Me Too movement, with uh, the way that we treat sexual assault victims in this country. When Republicans look at this, though, they see uh, they see liberals, Democrats, who are trying to politicize the court, who are, uh, to Ariane's point, and trying to turn the court into a, a, a group of nine justices that are political figures and not sort of, sort of neutral arbiters of the Constitution. And looking at all these women, primarily, there are men in the crowd as well. And these are protesters who are wanting to know their voices are heard. Women want to feel supported. And yet you have the president mocking Christine Blasey Ford earlier this week, then calling other survivors, including the woman who was sitting next to me, uh, Anna Maria, paid protesters, framing men as potential victims of false accusations. Who wins the messaging war? Look, I don't think anybody wins in this situation. This has been a pretty ugly uh, two weeks, I think, for our politics. I think that the president's comments at that rally where he was mocking Christine Blasey Ford are going to resonate and, and kind of lift up above a lot of the noise that we've seen uh, from Democratic operatives that I've heard as they've been talking to uh, in, in focus groups. That is something that has really broken through. Again, it's not just because of politics. It really has tapped into just a broader kind of cultural moment that we're living in uh, where you know, I think there is a new reckoning with what a lot of women have gone through for, for years, things that women have never spoken about publicly and are only now coming forward. So I, I do think that, that that set of remarks from the president where he just took on Blasey Ford directly and really was trying to just cut holes in her argument is, is going to resonate. I want to go live to Miguel Marquez, who's right in the middle of these protesters right now. Miguel, uh, this was quite the, the scene it had changed from just moments ago when we were talking to you. Explain to us what's happening. 
So what started as a trickle of civil disobedience there on the steps of the Supreme Court has become this, just outright anger and upset that Brett Kavanaugh is being uh, not only confirmed today, but is being sworn in right now. Those are the very doors of the Supreme Court. There are hundreds of protesters that who have now come up onto the stairs. Uh, they are pushing toward the doors. You can see that there is uh, the security officers for the Supreme Court who are in front of the doors trying to keep that crowd back. Uh, what they want is for anyone inside this building to hear that they are out there. I want to show you the steps just down from us as well. The, 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 uh, the steps that they have tried to keep clear all day long as these protests have unfolded and for the most part the protesters have stayed off the steps. Uh, now most have come up here onto the steps of the Supreme Court and literally making as much noise as they can essentially just to make sure that Brett Kavanaugh can hear them as he is being sworn in. What they are chanting is we believe survivors for the most part. I'll let you listen to a little of that right now. And that's the level it has gotten to. That's what they want the, the newest associate justice of the Supreme Court to hear. That's what they want the Senate to hear. And this is what the, they want the country to hear and to see uh, as this, this very rancorous debate over Brett Kavanaugh comes to a to an end, at least on the, the, the procedural part of it. But clearly for the people gathered here today, this is just the beginning. Anna. And it seems like their passion is only growing. Miguel, thank you. We know we'll continue to check in with you. Ariane, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm thinking because I have covered so many cases, hot button cases coming out of there, the gay marriage case recently, um, the Texas abortion law, and you never saw people protesting up on the steps like that. They weren't allowed to. And I'm also thinking about Bush v. Gore because Justice Breyer has this line in his speech and he says it all the time. He said, you know, what's good about our country is after Bush v. Gore, there weren't protests in the streets. And look how, where we are now. Mm. Look where we have moved now. These are protests. They're at the door. Um, that, uh, that just shows how things have changed and how these uh, confirmation, uh, confirmation hearings are forever changed, it seems to me. It's hard to put this back into the bottle a little bit. Do you agree, Julie? I, I think that's the concern that a lot of people have. I mean, you did see in the Gorsuch nomination uh, just about a year ago that it was a much different situation. So I, I don't think we've moved on completely uh, to a point where we can't have a, a confirmation hearing where a justice could get some votes from the other side. But certainly, I think over the last several years, we've seen that the confirmation hearings have gone the way of the rest of our politics, which is just more divisive and, and much more partisan. Well, we heard Susan Collins yesterday say this is rock bottom. We heard from Justice Elena Kagan just last night, and I'm quoting her, where she says, it is an incredibly important thing for court to guard is this reputation of being fair, being impartial, being neutral, and not being simply an extension of the terribly polarized political process and environment that we live in. Do you think that's already happened, Ariane? Well, here's what's interesting. So you had yesterday uh, Justice Kagan, Justice Sotomayor, two liberals, and they were very concerned, and they could have kept quiet. Instead, they said, look, polit politics have, has, um, they don't want politics to infect this. But you also had, in the last couple of days, retired Justice uh, John Paul mm -hmm. Stevens. He's 98 years old, and he did something that you rarely, rarely uh, see. He said, because of what he thought was Kavanaugh's judicial temperament that came out during that the last half Half of those hearings, he said that he thought he was unqualified for the court. So uh, these, almost every norm that I can think of is being broken. We've never seen a Supreme Court justice um, before taking the bench do an interview with Fox. We saw that. He wrote an op-ed. He came out in that with that scathing language. Uh, this is um, this is uh, new territory, and we have seen. You know, we saw with Clarence Thomas. Certainly, Clarence Thomas had uh, his uh, uh, share of uh, um, controversy during his hearings. But uh, I'm looking at the the woman there sitting in the lap of Lady Justice, yeah. and uh, that's. Yeah. 
That's something we don't usually I mean, see. I actually would be curious to get your take on how you think Kavanaugh will be received by his fellow justices, given all of this turmoil and given what you said about how they don't like to be seen as political figures. Well, well don't forget that Kavanaugh knows these justices, right? He helped when he worked in the White House. He worked on the confirmation of Roberts. He was hired by Elena Kagan when she was dean at Harvard to be a law professor. He went to the same high school as Gorsuch. Uh, so he knows these people. And he's one other thing which is sort of inside baseball, but he's what's called a feeder. Lots of his clerks go on to clerk at the Supreme Court. So he is one of those rare people uh, who knows a lot about this court. He knows about the confirmation process, and he personally knows a lot of these justices. 